Welcome back to Cinemasaurus Rex, and this week it's Godzilla vs. Biolante. Now, this one was imported from America, and as you can see, the DVD cover's kind of been spoiled by this yellow splodges of shit, where they've also decided to slap two other films along with it. So you're getting your main event here, but then you get on the pre-show, you get Monster and the Shark vs. Mega Shark vs. Octopus. Now. Now this way predates Sharknado or any, you know, because Asylum have come a long way since and in the early days they just made real shit films. So Mega Shark vs Octopus, bag of shit, Monster, bag of shit. It's supposed to be a rip off of Cloverfield but it's really not, it's just awful, awful film. Another thing I should mention is there's no options on the film either. So you're just stuck with the American dub of the film which... I don't really mind. The actual film starts off pretty cool. You just get all this fire in the background and Godzilla's big face is in the way. And it's like, ooh, kind of a menacing start. And we kind of get another Rocky moment here. It's a recap of what happened in the last film, Godzilla vs. the Super X. And that's important because this is literally a direct sequel. This is li the day after Godzilla disappeared and fell under the volcano. It's straight in. So a direct sequel. It's good to see, you know, continuity and story being brought straight to the... Straight to the front of the page. They are just saying you know, all this devastation that is caused in Tokyo. It's like a ghost town. Just everything's destroyed. It's chaos and stuff. So these guys, the kind of um, American soldiers, are kind of looking for Godzilla cells. They want to get the cells, see what makes him so strong, so tough, and, and see if they can create something of their own. He gets stopped by this man of unknown origin at this point. We don't know where he's from. He's just this hitman assassin. He kills out. He kills the American troops. Rescues the cells. Takes them off somewhere. We then go to this country, which I'm pretty sure it's a made-up country. It's called Saradia. Never heard. I've heard of Saudi Arabia. I think it's like a knockoff of that. It's like Saradia. It's all these rich men with deserts and all that kind of shit. So oil companies and stuff. And basically, what they want to do is they want to get Godzilla cells, mix them with wheat. So that in, even in the desert, that they can grow this monster wheat that can't be destroyed by the harsh climate. So this scientist daughter is messing about in this lab with these Godzilla cells and then something goes awry and boom, explosion, happens, she dies. And the only important part about her dying is that her soul is now part of the storyline. We, we go back to Japan. This guy, the scientist, he starts crossbreeding Godzilla cells with rose cells to create strong flowers or something. I don't really know why he's creating monster roses, but he, he does it. He leaves for the night. He's like, yeah, I did a good good job there. Uh, did some two fellas try and break in. They want to rob, rob his work. And God knows what's happened. All you see is um, these vines coming out of nowhere, grabbing them and kills them, basically. I mean, what do the vines belong to? Is it Bulbasaur? Who knows? Anyway, a scientist goes back to the lab, sees these dead bodies, what these vines have killed, and there's a big hole in the wall where something has escaped. And like, oh, fuck me. What happened in this lab last night? I was just crossbreeding cells, me. Just a scientist, aren't I? So they go, try and find out what's escaped through this wall, they get to this lake, and there's this giant rose. This... And no word of a lie, the scientist says, what you see there is no ordinary plant. That... Really? Really? A 300 foot fucking rose isn't an ordinary plant? Well, fuck me sideways. Well done. Well done. You want the Nobel Prize. Fucking have it, lad. Dickhead. All these explosions are going on near this volcano. Godzilla comes. God knows how he survived it. It just shows you the true strength and power of Godzilla. He, um, he starts marching his way. And it's like, oh shit, he's coming after us. We get the ship, start going, send everything we got, lads, send everything. Start shooting away, firing at him, nothing. 
useless, he's atomic breath, boom, boom, boom. But what they've not told you is that they've actually been developing Super X2. Now, I personally weren't really a fan of Super X, it's just a, a ship, isn't it? So, well, this Super X2 is apparently 10 times stronger and it's got diamonds inside it so it can reflect Godzilla's atomic breath. So, that comes after Godzilla, he fires at it, and he's like, there. So it's Godzilla versus Super X2, he's firing at it, he's reflecting the beams back at him. It keeps firing, keeps firing, eventually it's doing more damage and Super X2 has to kind of bugger off and it's like, oh well we need repairs. So after Super X2, Godzilla's still marching on, he's like, oh god he's coming back after Japan. And then that's where the flower psychic actually has something useful, he says, whoa, 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 he's not, it's actually Biolante. Biolante is egging Godzilla on, apparently, because they've got the same cells and the clones of each other. Biolante can talk to Godzilla, and Biolante has been taunting Godzilla. He's like, hey, come after me, Nobed, come after me. Godzilla, not taking any of this shit, he's like, right, Biolante, I'm going to put my title on the line. You versus me, stop egging me on, you little bastard. Puts his title down, and this is where we get a first fight Godzilla versus Biolante. Title is on the line. No, Biolante straight in there with vine whips, wrapping it round his neck, wrapping it round his arms, his legs, really pulling him. He's like, oh, he's got Godzilla here. Godzilla then starts atomic breath in all these vines, snapping him a bit. Atomic breath right into Biolante's stomach, and it starts really fucking Biolante up. He starts gushing blood and all sorts here. And then this is where we see Godzilla bleed again. So, last time I was on about green shit coming out of Godzilla's mouth. It turns out Godzilla's got green blood now. Now, he had red blood. In the show series, but now he's got green blood. It's probably something to do with the rating thing. It doesn't look as good, but whatever. So Godzilla's got green blood now because Biolante shoots these vines, goes straight through his arm, come out there, and they've got these little mouths on them now, and they start biting away at Godzilla. Godzilla catches one in his mouth, rips it apart, so it's atomic breath in the absolute shit out of Biolante, and Biolante's down. Godzilla retains. Godzilla still your undisputed heavyweight champion. Godzilla. Marching on with a belt above his arm. So after our fight, Godzilla marches now through to Osaka. He's about to destroy Osaka. The Super X2 has been repaired at this point. It's coming back at him. But it's actually not meant to kill Godzilla. It's just a distraction. Because the scientists have got this other plan. They've got these... They want to draw him in into the middle of the city. And then we've got four buildings around him where men with bazooka drills are going to fire bazooka drills that have got this poison antidote or whatever and it'll go straight through into Godzilla give him a dose of this lethal injection and basically kill him from there so Super X comes, does its job, Godzilla comes, destroys a Super X2 in, in a matter of seconds it's worthless but these bazooka fellas get the shot off um, two of them hit so they get this drill all this stuff is going into Godzilla's body now apparently they've put enough dosage in to kill three Godzillas or something like that. So they do that, and it doesn't seem to have any effect on Godzilla, and they're like, well, we're fucked up here, aren't we? So it's like, oh, you'll have to fire it again, lads. So one of these bazooka for lads is looking around. Godzilla is actually right at the building now, and he sees, he clocks this um, little guy with a bazooka. He looks, they have a little moment, they look at each other. So the bazooka one fires one right into Godzilla's mouth, and he's like, he starts taunting him. He says, like, ha, take that, you bastard. And Godzilla just goes, spoosh straight through the building, just kills out this little man. I don't know why this little man thinking he can take out Godzilla, but that was uh, the end of that. So now they're thinking, well, why is it? It must be because he's cold-blooded. So what they're going to do is heat him up like a microwave. They're going to lure him to all these electric pads and just start warming him up, basically. So they're going to start cooking him so that this stuff inside uh, takes effect. So they lure him in, Godzilla starts standing on these electric things and he's getting hurt a little bit, burned a little thing. Godzilla clocks on, he's not stupid. He starts seeing that there's all these traps in, he's like, hang on, they're trying to walk on them. So he just atomic breaths them all, it just sets off a chain reaction of explosions, stuff goes off everywhere, it starts raining, like some kind of acid rain starts coming down. And then at this point, not too sure why, probably because it's something to do with a water cycle, Biolante, bits of him start falling in, going to the ground. He comes up out of the ground. We've got the new Biolante because he's been evolved a bit. Because instead of having a rose head, he's got this massive crocodile head. It's just like a big fucking jaw. And he's like, Jesus Christ, he's, um, he's a mean looking bastard. Now, Biolante. Got to say, the special effects of Biolante are pretty good, especially when you see him moving. It's, how do you have done it? Top notch. 
and we, this is where we get a second fight, a main event of the evening. Godzilla versus Biolante, title again on the line. Now, we look at the tail of the tape. Biolante going into this with a height advantage and the weight advantage now since he's evolved form. So, Biolante, vine whips again. They don't work. Atomic breath straight through a lot of them. And this is where Biolante starts his new, like, opens his mouth, starts spitting this, like, acid shit into Godzilla's face. It's like all in his eyes. Godzilla can't see what he's doing. It's like God knows. And it, it, again, vine whips Godzilla and he starts bringing him towards him. Godzilla, then he starts trying to get. Godzilla tries to eat him. He puts his mouth over Godzilla's head. He's trying to mush him alive. Trying to really kill him. And he's got Godzilla in a bit of a danger here. And got to think, Godzilla at this time has been heated up quite a lot. So all these anti-bacteria shit, all this plague stuff inside him, is building up whilst he's doing it. So he's already kind of going into this, handicapped as it is. Godzilla, though, atomic breath right into uh, Biolante's mouth, right into his stomach. Really fucking him up. That Biolante lets go Godzilla. But at this point, Godzilla's exerted so much energy on so much heat that the actual bacteria's affected him as well. So Godzilla starts taking a step back, falls over and collapses. And it's like, has Biolante won? But Biolante also has just been killed by Godzilla. So he, but Biolante gets dissolved and shit and then the water cycle comes back up and takes him into the air and it's at this point that we find out Biolante had the soul of a human the little scientist girl that died in the lab her soul was inside Biolante doesn't make any sense she died in friggin Sarabia or whatever they want to call it and this was made in Tokyo so her soul got on a plane to Tokyo and got inside Biolante I'll never friggin know but whatever so her soul's fucked off so Biolante's dead Godzilla's down it's a draw it's a double KO, and as we all know, Godzilla retains his belt, so Godzilla is still your heavyweight champion. He's not taken, since beating Anguirus in the short era, he has not suffered one one-on-one -on -one loss. So you've got to say, props to Godzilla for keeping his title for this long. This is a good reign that he's on. So, Godzilla vs. Biolante, do I recommend it? I've got to say, I give it a bit of a thumbs up. There's a lot of stupid moments in it with the whole soul shit and stuff, but... The monster effects are really good. I, I do like Biolante. It's quite a good one. Um, why why Toho decided the whole Godzilla slash Rose thing is is a bit worrying, but it kind of pays off in the end. It kind of looks pretty decent. So give it a thumbs up. Not the not the best by any means, but still it's a decent film. A good watch. So Godzilla Biolante, go watch it. So our next film next week is gonna be. I hope even I don't know. Yes, it's a good one. Next week, it's Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. Now, I'm a big fan of King Ghidorah, even though if you look at the Showa series, King Ghidorah has never actually won a fight. He's got a draw and he's got a shitload of losses. He's never actually... It's not because he's not good enough. It's just that he's always been fighting in a handicap situation. He's never had a one-on-one -on -one fight, so King Ghidorah is getting his first one-on-one -on -one fight against Godzilla. It's a fight that we wanted to see because we've always said who's actually the better of the two, so next week we are going to find out Godzilla vs King Ghidorah, title is on the line.